Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome in this new video. Today I will teach you how to bungee launch your Micromax. Let's go. So, first of all, let's talk about the bungee you will need. Uh, the bungee is made from four different parts. The first one is the stick. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. I don't know the English name for this. I will put it on the screen. But it's what you stick into the ground to make sure it doesn't move when you pull on it. This thing needs to be about a foot long to make sure it's deep enough in the ground for it to not move when you pull hard on the rubber band, on the bungee, because it's not rubber, it's silicon. But anyway, so this thing needs to come from like a farmer shop or something like this to make it really, really tough. It really needs to be strong because if it breaks or something like this, because it's a rubber essentially, uh, if it breaks here, it comes straight to your face. So please avoid to do that and make sure it's strong and it's well anchored in the ground. Really, it's really a big safety point. Then the bungee itself. So this is a 8 mm diameter bungee, so for the Micromax a 6 mm would do plenty. Uh, 8 mm is not really needed, but it's great. Um, it's secured on this thing uh, by uh, a tubing around it to make sure it doesn't uh, erode itself, it doesn't break down uh, by sliding around like this, by ripping it apart. And here is it's secured by uh, a tie, a really nice tie with uh, wires to make sure it's it will not move. I will put all, all the terms in English uh, I don't find in my mind right now on the screen. So the bungee itself, the elastic part, you need about five to six meters of it. So about this. <laughs> then third part. So you do the tie with the wire again, with a loop, then here a loop with a double eight knot on the wire. And this wire is just a standard winch wire. So it's about 1.2 millimeter diameter. You can take fishing wire of the same diameter. It will work the same. You just need to, you just need to pay attention to have no cracks in it. Otherwise it will break, obviously. And you need about 10 meter to 15 meter of this plastic wire, this nylon wire. And then there is the last part, the buckle. So this loop here uh, is made from the wire itself that is passing inside the um, tube that is around a standard paracord. The strand usually inside this are not in it anymore. It's the wire itself passing inside this and with a standard knot at the end. So that's about it from how the bungee is made. Uh, so it needs to be plenty strong because if I want to put some ballast in it, if I have one day uh, a bigger glider, I want to be able to bungee start it. So, yeah, if you want to go overkill like me, 8 millimeters will be what you need. If you want just standard for the Micromax, 6 millimeter will be enough. Everything is linked down below, so no worries about that, you will find the parts. So, then on the glider, what's happening? So, it's not the same as with a high start, with a Sando or something like this you will pull from about where the CG is on the glider for it to climb with the bungee, with the sando. With a bungee, a catapult, uh, you need to pull from the nose because you are pulling flat and then you pull up and you climb. It's how a catapult bungee works. So the hook is not really a hook, it's just, as you can tell here, like a screw and to go more in the detail about how it's made, how it is in the glider, I will cut and do a separate clip to show you everything really accurately. And welcome in how it's made. So 
Today we are looking at the bungee hook. So this hook is not really a hook uh, as it's just a wedge for the loop of the rope. So the little wedge is this part. It's a screw with a nylock nut. So I'm gonna show you how I made it. So if you don't want to bother to make this thing with the screw and the nut, you can directly buy it from Sansibir. I will put a link in the description below. So I unscrew the screw. And that's it. So here is the nylock uh, nut. As you can see there is a bead on the top. This is really important. You need absolutely a nut with a bead on the top and a chamfered screw. This type of screw with the angle here. If you have a standard screw where it's flat, it's not good. You really need that angle to make the wedge for the loop of the rope. If you don't have it, it will not work. So if you don't want, again, to make it yourself, you can get one already made from Sunsy beer. There is a link in the description, but that's really simple and you can make as many as you want uh, Because it's really easy to lose this kind of screw. It's really small. So yeah, just I prefer to make my own and It's so simple that yeah, it's just very really simple. Just put the nut reverse obviously you don't want to put it on the normal way because you need to put the bead first to obtain the um, the space to put the rope kind of wedge i just screw it all the way and it will just stop itself at the right point leaving this gap you can see the gap here i think here you can see it this is the gap for the loop and this is really easy to make and it works perfectly. Now about what's in the fuselage. In the fuselage there is an insert. I will put a picture of the insert on the screen so you can see. And now there is, oh it is in the fuselage. I think you can see it right there. And uh, it's in a piece of wood to make sure it's really locked in place and then the piece of wood is glued to the fuselage so it's really really secure I don't like to put it directly to the fiber because the fiber can just tear so yeah I just prefer to do like that so then about the canopy and the fuselage when you make the hole make sure everything is perfectly locked it's perfectly in place then make a hole with a two millimeter drill bit pay attention to mark your hole perfectly uh, to be just in front of the servos without touching them because otherwise you will damage them obviously and not be too far forward because otherwise you will take space for your receiver and your battery and you might not be able to put them back in Obviously it will move forward your CG, so you might need to modify your lead uh, in the front. Then, as you can tell, it's pretty invisible from the exterior. And so this would be like my slope soaring all the time. And as soon as I want to pull the bungee, just put the screw in, screw finger tight, and that's it. I'm ready to put it in the air with the bungee. And as soon as... I want to reopen the canopy, just unscrew it, and that's it. That's really simple and really efficient. So, yeah, that's how it's done, and that's how it's meant to be done. So, back to the field now. So, that's how it's made on the glider. And if it's made like this, it's because here it's easy to release. It hooks really well. That way, I can pull as hard as I want, but as soon as it goes down, it just release so it's really an easy way to to make something work really efficiently 
and also it's rope at the end not a metal uh, ring because metal rings tend to stay stuck sometimes. If you pull a bit hard it can deform and it can just wedge in the screw and you're done. Your glider just go and it's over. <laughs> so ropes is your best friend and uh, doing this technique, thanks Christoph, it's just a perfect technique. So now I will teach you how to do it. <laughs> so here we go. So sometimes it could be a bit frustrating because it takes a while to find a spot where the, the stick, I will call it like this anyway, uh, can be really deep into the ground. But you really need to pay attention about that. It's really about safety. So make sure it's really secured. So make sure my glider is ready. Everything works. Good. Voltage good. Voltage of radio good. Resist side good. So now I'm gonna look to my bungee to make sure it's good and there is no knots, unwanted knots. And um, everything's perfect. I can pull it back gently and do a gentle first one. Obviously it needs to be hard enough to put my glider in the air, but yeah, you will see. <laughs> Straight line, I check. Yep. Start pulling a bit, put some tension on it. As soon as there is some tension, I put it to my hook. I put myself to the back of the glider and on the boom, grabbing it like this, like a, a fan grip kind of, and walking straight back. Always looking to the bungee to see if there is nothing happening, like it's steering or something like this. Now I feel enough, enough tension on it, so I know it's okay for our first, first one. So I hold always me, with my right hand because my elevator is on my left stick. And I, I also use a slight preset to make it climb as soon as possible. So my hand needs to avoid the tail. If I hit the tail, the glider is done. With a V-tail, it's way easier. I can nearly let it go like this. So I'm ready. I check every, everywhere around. Preset, release. That's like 50 meter high. And now, if I want, I can do aerobatics. I can do looking for thermals or speed run. Now I'm gonna catch it. <laughs> and it comes back fast. So, yeah, obviously I can look for thermals, but it's not the point of this video. So I will put uh, the camera back there to make you see all it does from the side. Yeah, I will do that. <laughs> so of course, each time you go Take back your catapult, your bungee, make sure there is no knots and the stick in the ground is well still stuck. It doesn't move, nothing, otherwise you just change and make a new hole, make it in a new place. And that's about it for today. Thank you all for watching. If you have any question, obviously you can leave it in the comment down below. I will reply to it. 
and if you enjoyed subscribe like everything for YouTube is amazing obviously thank you a lot for watching and see you next time bye